video episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts, my little channel on YouTube and my corner of the general interwebs where I like to talk about knitting and sometimes crochet. Those are my crafts and also books I am reading or listening to on audio and maybe TV or movies that I am enjoying, and other life and general chatty things that I want to share with you. So, thank you so much for choosing to watch this video and spend a little bit of your time with me. I, I really hope you enjoy it. And, um, yeah, so please, let's settle in. Get yourself a delicious beverage. I'll wait right here. You can pause and get your yarn, your hook, your needles, or maybe fiber and a spindle or your embroidery or whatever. And let's enjoy some crafty chatty time. So it has been another week. I can't believe it's Monday again. Today is June 15th, and um, the last couple weeks have been kind of cloudy, gray, damp. We've had, you know, rain showers off and on most days. Um, we've had, uh, yeah, that's mostly what it's been like for about two weeks, and so it feels not really like spring or heading into summer right now and that also explains why I am wearing my very favorite cozy shawl that I love. I love the colors. I love the size because it's so so long and it just wraps and wraps and um, it's so cozy, so pretty, makes me happy. Um, this is the pattern is the Dotted Rays Speckled Fade by um, Stephen West. And I used some of my favorite speckled yarns that I've been like saving for special. And this was exactly the special project. And then for this, I um, just did like solid and a semi-solid for the stripes. Anyway, um, yeah. So, I'm cozy and warm. I've got my tea this afternoon. Today's tea is a London Fog Latte, which is Earl Grey, a uh, brewed strong, and um, a generous amount of milk, and some vanilla syrup and that is what we call a London Fog Latte over here. Um, I am coming to you from Washington State in the United States and yeah so how has your crafting or your creative life been? Um, I hope that you've been able to to do something creative and that that has brought you some some happiness or peace in these very turbulent very difficult times um and i hope you are doing well wherever you are in the world um i and making progress on the first sleeve of this um, cropped pullover. It was not designed to be cropped, but that's just how it turned out for me. Because <laughs> of the amount of yarn that I had and just kind of the way that the gauge and the sizing went. Um, but yeah, this pattern is the branches and buds pullover 
by Carrie Bostick Hogue. And last week I had just bound off the bottom of the body. This is worked top down. And so um, those a few inches are what I did on um, the first sleeve this week. Also, there are a couple stripes now on the second piece of the streamlined tank. The first piece is already finished and I even wove in every end. I made sure I did that before I started the second piece because with these manual stripes there are a lot of ends and I don't like weaving in ends. So I knew that if I didn't make myself weave in the ends on the first one and I had to weave in all of the ends at the very end it would never happen and it would just sit and never get put together. Uh, I think what I might do this time because I didn't really like weaving in all those ends just I had saved all of them until all of the piece was done. I think when I'm a couple more stripes, I'm going to start weaving in some ends a little bit here, a little bit there as I progress on this piece because, yeah, I have to make myself do it even though I don't like it. But I, I am excited to see that top done. And I don't know, maybe this summer it'll get warm enough to wear it. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, I have also been, I also did the heels, both heels on the Winter's Frost Socks. This is a free pattern available for download on Ravelry. And I, I really like it. It's just enough of a little pattern to add a little bit of interest and to look a little a little nicer than just a super plain stockinette and I did a heel flap and gusset I am decreasing on the gusset right now that is the heel that fits me best it really is and I did learn a while ago how to do a mini gusset for a short row heel. And so if I add, if I do a mini gusset and make that adjustment to a short row heel, I can wear a short row heel. So now I do have options. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I know two ways now to make a heel that fits. But the heel flap and gusset is still kind of my favorite. Yeah. Hmm. Do you knit socks? What kind of a sock knitter are you? Um, yeah, I actually did a whole video just really focused on socks. So if you are a sock knitter and really enjoy talking socks, I recommend um, find, uh, go to that video. It's called Sock Talk. I don't know the episode number, but it's a early. It's before episode 10. It was a single digit episode. Um, 
Yeah, but what kind of a sock knitter are you? What kind of a heel do you like to do? Um, yeah, or have you have you ever knit a sock? Or may, maybe that's just not your thing, and that's good. That's cool, too. Um, what are your favorite kind of um, comfort projects? Socks really are a comfort project for me. Um, so, so what does that for you? Uh, but I enjoy cuff down and I usually do both of my socks on separate needles, but I do them at the same, t I do that one little bit on here, a few rows on here, and I kind of keep them both going in parallel because second sock syndrome. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the kind of sock knitter I am. Occasionally I do a toe up, but it's not my super favorite. But for a change of pace, I like to do it sometimes. And um, yeah, it, Toe up is really good, actually, if you're not sure how much yarn you have and how much of a leg you can get. Like if you're doing um, a sock with maybe some leftovers and, and you want to use all your yarn, but you don't want to like be like, I can't finish a toe. I use too much yarn on the leg. Yeah, that's not a good situation. And we try to avoid that kind of thing. So toe up is excellent for that. Um, yeah. But mm, that's the socks. And that's the crafting that has been happening. I have um, conti been continuing to read um, who do you serve? Who do you protect? It is a collection of essays uh, about um, policing and the difficult relationship between in the United States between um, African-American communities or black communities and the police and issues talking about the, the police brutality problems that we have and and um, just how white supremacy uh, is definitely a part of the institution and the 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 problems that we have in our policing. So that's, that's a, a good book. And I also have been continuing to read Uprooted by Naomi Novik. And in the early part, I'm actually, I'm not that far in it yet. But um, I had a little bit of a rough start in, I think, like chapter two, chapter three, and I was just like going, uh, I don't know. It's getting really frustrated. Um, just kind of frustrated with the main characters a little bit. Um, I think I can see that they started a little bit annoying just so that there can be an arc. I see where things now, uh, where she is starting to have a little bit of, of growth starting to happen. Um, so... Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to, 
I think there's definitely going to be a romance, and I'm not sure I'm going to like it just because of the start of it. <laughs> but uh, I'm willing to see how it goes. Um, and hopefully, even if I don't really get fully invested in the romance side of it, hopefully the rest of it is good enough to get me through. But, um, yeah. That's how that's going right now. And let me see. I made a couple notes. Let's see if there's anything else that I'm leaving out. Um, yesterday was Father's Day in the United States. <clears throat> and it was kind of sad. For me <laughs> just because I wanted to see my dad and I couldn't um, because where <clears throat> I can't visit my mom and dad right now um, they're not allowing any they live in a full-time nursing care home and they're they're not allowing any visitors and um, I don't know when that's going to open up, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was sad. I'm still a little bit sad. Um, but yeah, that's the first Father's Day, um, that, that it's been like that. So, yeah. I did see my sister this week. I um I drove up about an hour to the area where she lives and we met uh and got some takeout food and sat in our cars and had a social distance visit. Um it was really good to talk to her and see her, you know, in close it's still at a distance, but like a lot closer than just, you know, a over the phone um, like that. So uh, that that was something I was really excited to be able to do and I looked forward to it and it was really good and fun and we enjoyed our food. She recommended a great place for takeout and it was delicious. I had a piece of quiche and a mocha. It was kind of a, like a brunch. <laughs> it was really good. Um, yeah. And, oh, back to reading for another minute. Uh, July is coming up soon. And in, I really like to watch BookTube. And... So, in BookTube world, July is a special month. It is Jane Austen July, and I am, I can't remember the host's names, but um, a lot of people will be reading Jane Austen and Jane Austen related books and making Jane Austen related videos, and I plan to participate um i have i've only been really watching booktube for maybe a maybe a year or so and last july i didn't know what jane austen july was so or no maybe I, anyway i didn't participate and so this will be my first time I'm going to read a Jane Austen novel. I'm not sure which. Um, I have seen lots of movie or like BBC miniseries adaptations, but I have only read one of her books. So, 
um, I'm excited to really actually read them instead of just watch adaptations. Um, so I am kind of excited about Jane Austen July. Um, and I don't know if that sounds interesting to you, but just in case I thought I'd share that so that you could think about it and maybe decide um, what you'd like to do to participate what you might like to read um and there are there are also lots of Jane Austen novel uh retellings in book form or um one of the challenges for Jane Austen July is to watch one of the adaptations which I definitely will do too I'm probably going to watch my favorite because it's been a while since I've watched my favorite Jane Austen adaptation is the BBC miniseries of Pride and Prejudice with Jennifer L. as Elizabeth and Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy. It's so... That is my absolute favorite. Colin Firth is my Mr. Darcy always and forever. In my heart, there will never be another Mr. Darcy. And if you have a different Mr. Darcy and if your favorite adaptation is a different one, I'd love to hear about it. And we can all gush about our favorite Mr. Darcy's. Um, but yeah, there have been... Um, modern retellings in book and movie form. Um, so you might want to seek out one of those. Uh, anyway, I might make a video when I, when I choose what I'm going to do, I might make a video and talk about some of those, uh, some of those book and movie adaptations that you might want to check out. That would be a great idea for a video, I think. Um, so I might do that. Anything else? Let's see. Yeah. Um, boom, 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 boom. I don't know. I, I have been watching some things on TV, but I don't know, nothing that I'm really feeling the need to talk about. Um, I'm just kind of continuing to look for just really fun and escapist things and nothing, nothing that I feel super strongly about right now that I feel that I want to share or recommend um so i think we've come to the end of this video chat and i hope that wherever you are that you are well i hope that your crafting or any other kinds of creative projects or um, hobby outlets that you have are going well and I hope that um, you are persevering and um, keep on making progress <laughs> like we were like I was talking about that I everything is is a progress and a process so um, yeah. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.